before I now introduce the first speaker, Piotr uh, Saborowski. He is um, leading and managing the IOG Innovation Program initiatives in, the cult in agriculture, marine, and building environment. Uh, he has been, you see, he worked on many different standards activities and uh, holds a Master of uh, Computer Science from Warsaw. And uh, he is fluent in the secure distributed systems for mass market and large scale computations architecture. So, and uh, so Piotr will be giving you the introduction to interoperability in the context of Iliad. And the floor is yours, uh, Piotr. You are muted, Piotr. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for this introduction. I hope you can see the big screen uh, now. Yes. yes. And um, yeah, I would just briefly talk about the interoperability challenges that we have in the in the Iliad project. Uh, not yet about the uh, complete solutions as we are in the middle of the project on one hand, but also this is a first in first webinar in the series and will definitely follow up with the other in depth uh, discussions. So Bente has already mentioned uh, briefly about the uh, the Iliad for those outside. Maybe it's important to mention that uh, we are building this digital twin for multiple uh, end users, meaning that it can be industry, it can be research, which a little bit differs from the perspective of the service provision. And we want to scale up. Uh, we want to uh, build uh, and fit into the ecosystem. So what's uh, the interoperability uh, we are talking about? is actually the ability to systems to talk to each other and to understand each other, which is quite important. And um, as you probably all know, it has different flavors. So this is quite a uh, mature model. It sometimes has three, sometimes five dimensions, but here we have the technical and the organizational interoperability. And that all influence what we are doing, but uh, yeah, we can a little bit influence also uh, what's uh, what's in the ecosystem based on our um, our our provision. So, in practice, uh, what we do when we consider interoperability is we think about some points of the of that uh, concept, and. Uh, we care about those because of different uh, reasons. You can probably provide some more. I just mentioned a few. So for example, we want to fit into the ecosystem and as mentioned, we want to scale. We want to exploit what's available uh, as the uptake option. We want to exploit what's available on the market for our upstream. Uh, we all use of the shelf solutions, also, uh, both as the software and uh, as the services. So we are somehow limited. We can uh, definitely build a point to point integration every time. Uh, who forbids the reach, but uh, we want to be cost effective. So we uh, really need to take care of the uh, not reinventing the wheel and not rewriting every time the same thingy. And uh, from our decisions that we have to make, uh, we have on the right side, uh, the, the pilots and the use cases, and uh, definitely they differ also. They have different scenarios, different actors, but uh, mm, they are really drivers of, the, uh, of our needs. And we have also the aspects uh, here. This, uh, this is an example just from one of the reference architecture, the, uh, the other one from the Gaia X, but uh, but complementary. Uh, this is international data spaces surface architecture model, and in fact, what we can see here uh, is all about the interoperability. It's not only the first column, which is what we call technical interoperability sometimes, 
but the identity management, the trust that we are building around the services, the governance in the end and the service levels that we want to achieve, all of that shall be, uh, mm, shall be interoperable in the middle to expose that on the endpoints. So, yeah. And uh, yeah, standards are just uh, a little bit helping and serving those needs in the harmonized way. So they prevent the degradation of the services uh, and in the, of the interoperability between them. And they uh, also help to recognize some compatible components, but most importantly, just limit our cost when we uh, build the solutions that integrate with multiple uh, assets. So I have a pool. Vote. So everybody needs to vote now to see the screen again. Uh, just briefly, uh, if this is a, this is uh, the value stream that's uh, proposed by the uh, BDVA. And uh, what's uh, just meant to be mentioned here is that we are covering most of that with our uh, actors. If somebody cannot see uh, oneself, just speak out loud during the discussion because uh, this can be misunderstanding uh, of, of our roles, but uh, here we are covering everything, which means that actually our customer is also uh, everybody in that in that loop. And then we have our uh, Iliad environment. Uh, we've mentioned that uh, this is a digital twin, so it provides this uh, functionality that's uh, a little bit uh, in addition to the spatial data infrastructure, as we know that from the previous years. But again, uh, we have the data providers. They are different. They are various. They are inside of the consortium and outside. We have the data spaces that we integrate that data together. And we have the uh, the core when the simulation can happen, and it can run different applications, which will influence us in a second. Uh, we have to challenge the findability, so we have the challenges also on the top. This is, for example, the findability. You have to have a catalog of the things to find, and you have to provide the functionality to query. You have to find the data you want, you have to find the services you want, and you have to recognize if this is suitable because of the licensing, some uh, service levels, the quality that you want to achieve. Um, and naturally, we have the also the human interface. Uh, in between, as we want to uh, call that uh, uh, architecture, we define those interoperability points in here in yellow, and we have that both on the input and the output of the data provision. Uh, and what's important here is that uh, here we can have multiple sources in different ways. So when it comes to the data spaces, we are really meshing up different types of data, which means uh, both the information uh, integration and also uh, organization, because the, the storage that we have sometimes influence the, the way that we are uh, providing the data efficiently and vice versa. So we may need some additional infrastructure if needed for our cases. For example, uh, here we have a lot of the NetCDF files, which are used by the, um, by the pilots. And uh, we want to expose them both as the files as, and as the APIs, and we need to do that efficiently. And the digital twin core, which I called here core, because this is, uh, again, the execution of the simulation. And in here we have uh, also different uh, type of the interoperability. So we can have some little storage on the engine, but usually uh, uh, what we are doing is uh, re referring to the external or some URI uh, data that can be briefly everywhere. And on the bottom, we have also the containerization infrastructure, which means we want to have the ability to run different application on that infrastructure. And we want to have the ability to open that infrastructure for our network and our partners in the project and outside to have this added products uh, available. And again, uh, the, uh, the interfaces of the, um, of the front end, uh, uh, are linked mostly to everything. So as we said, we need to have the data that's uh, loaded into the simulation, but we also have to have the lightweight 
version of the data that we want, need, may need to visualize on the front ends. Uh, that's what the uh, cloud native movement is, is doing also, uh, but also the API's approach in general is, is familiar with that. I'm guessing I'm coming to the end, but yeah, I have a few minutes. So uh, if we consider the reus reusability uh, constraints, uh, we haven't solved yet uh, on the previous slide, the information level integration. We just talk about the uh, transactions. Uh, the information level integrations mean that we understand what the data is. And in particular case for the Iliad, we may need to know what's the sensor accuracy, for example, or what was the model uh, confidence that we uh, that we used. Not only, but we are solving this with the semantic harmonization. Mm. I guess there will be a uh, next episode uh, talking deeper about the ocean information model that supports that as this information backbone. But uh, just to mention, this is the semantic interoperability change that we also need to uh, solve. And with all of that said that about the spatial data infrastructure uh, um, for the open data, we want to provide a marketplace, which brings yet another few interoperability points. We have the triple E, authentication, authorization, and access. But we have also um, service policies and the procedures of the registration we have to take care of the quality and quality assurance of the data of the services and naturally the service levels of uh, every component that we offer, uh, especially not for free. Uh, then uh, we want to fit into the larger context. So we are aware of what's happening in the European perspective, both from the public and from the industry. Mm, we will follow up this discussion with the uh, Gaia X. The idea is quite common. We uh, um, want to build the common market that's federated, that provides the data access and uh, service access. It is supported by the uh, vocabularies. Just to mention, uh, this year we are also starting the working group between GRC, ISO, and supporting that from the Open Geospatial Consortium side uh, to provide the guidelines how to do that. I believe that with the Iliad, we can provide a lot of the use cases for the GAIA-X. As, far, as far as I know, GAIA-X is highly driven by the use cases. Uh, so we can probably provide some use cases, but or we can also implement some of the use cases and propose that to GAIA-X. And here's a high level relationship between what uh, I presented on the let's say, component level and on the um, Gaia X uh, architecture. Uh, so we both have the data spaces. Uh, we actually both have services because what we call the um, digital queen uh, applications are the services. Uh, we have that uh, identity and trust uh, on the bottom at the access point in the marketplace, as well as the compliance. And we have the catalog, which is also federated in Gaia X. Uh, for us, uh, we are actually building uh, catalogs that will harvest some of the data and will also uh, combine it uh, as the federated one into the into the uh, one space. And I, with that say, I guess I'm out of time, which is fortunate because I'm open for your questions.